On today's episode, the Colorado Avalanche defeated the Tampa Bay Lightning in six games on Sunday night to take home the Stanley Cup. I'll get into a quick recap of the series and the entire postseason, plus a look back at the Brandon Hagel trade, knowing what we do now after his first postseason run as a member of the Lightning. Then I'll get into a breakdown of 2022 NHL draft prospect Sam Renzel, and to wrap things up will be Riley Stillman's 2021-2022 season recap. All that and plenty more right here on Locked On Blackhawks. Your Locked On Blackhawks, your daily podcast on the Chicago Blackhawks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in to the Locked On Blackhawks podcast, your daily podcast on the Chicago Blackhawks. Today is Tuesday, June 28th. I'm your host, Jack Bushman. You can find me out on Twitter at JackBushman2, or you can also go and check out my Strictly Blackhawks account at Talk and Hockey for all the latest Blackhawks news and updates. And if you're listening to the audio version of today's episode and you like what you're hearing, then please be sure to go and show some support first by following the podcast which will only take a quick couple of seconds. Literally, just a quick click of the button will help me out tremendously. Be sure to go and leave the show five stars if you like what you're hearing today as well. And if you're tuning in through Apple Podcasts or through Spotify, then definitely be sure to go and leave me a review because I always greatly appreciate getting some feedback from all my wonderful listeners out there. If you're a frequent listener of the show, be sure to go and leave me a review down uh, on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify. And the best part of it all, it's 100% for free wherever you may be listening to your podcast, whether that be through Apple Podcasts, Odyssey, Spotify, Google Podcasts, etc. It's all 100% for free. And if you go and follow the show right now, then you'll be able to get the latest episode as soon as it comes out each day. And if you're not already watching the video version of today's episode, then be sure to go and check out Lockdown Blackhawks on YouTube. Each and every episode, folks, throughout the rest of the summer and the training camp this fall is going to have a video attached to it as well. So if you haven't done so yet, please go and subscribe to Lockdown Blackhawks on YouTube. I would greatly appreciate all the help that I can get in that department. I'm really trying to keep boosting those numbers up. Go and smash the like button for me down below as well and comment as to what grade you think Blackhawks defenseman Riley Stillman deserved for his performance this season. And last, go and ring the bell, turn on those push notifications, so that way when the episode gets uploaded to YouTube, you'll be notified when it happens each and every day. All right, good morning, everyone. Thank you all for tuning in to another episode of Lockdown Blackhawks, your one-stop shop for all things Chicago Blackhawks. And thank you for making the show your first listen here to start off your day. To kick things off on the show this morning, I wanted to start off by talking about the Tampa Bay Lightning falling short to the Colorado Avalanche, falling short of the three-peat as the Avs defeat the Bolts 2-1 to in Game 6 to take home the Stanley Cup. What an incredible series it was, uh, but ultimately the Avalanche were... They were the better team, and especially in in that closeout game six, the second half of the second period and the third, they were in full shutdown mode, and it was a perfect depiction of what it takes to be a dominant team in today's day and age, right? Like, they weren't getting the elite offensive chances that they were, you know, throughout the entirety of the postseason. I mean, Colorado absolutely throttled the Western Conference on its way to the Stanley Cup final. Uh, They were 12-2. and In their first three series, the only two losses coming to the St. Louis Blues. The other two series were sweeps for the Avs. Uh, But it wasn't the typical offensive showing that we have seen where they're scoring four or five goals each and every game and uh, the skill is on full display. No, it was more so the speed and the tenacity. And they were, the four check was incredible. I mean, they weren't giving the Lightning anything at all in the third period no real high danger chances they made life as easy as possible on Darcy Kemper uh and that was a perfect display of speed dominating the play even if it didn't lead to offensive opportunities they were just so fast they were shutting down everything that the Lightning had they were forechecking and 
uh, preventing a clean breakout from the defensive zone. And then they stood tall at their own blue line and made the lightning go and dump things in and have to win puck battles along the boards. They didn't give them anything easy. So it was an incredibly impressive display of uh, teamwork and just, just overall um, having the, the fastest pace in the NHL and using it to your advantage, a, a incredible display there by the abs in game six to close it out. And I'm so happy for, you know, Nathan McKinnon, Gabriel Landis Cog, Miko Ranton, and that core that's been together for a while now that's been so close, but hasn't been able to get over the hump until this point. Uh, Valeri Nachushkin, of course, was an absolute beast throughout the playoffs. He's about to get paid this year. I can't say enough about Kale McCarr, only 23 years old, and he's a Hobie Baker winner, a Conn Smythe winner, Norris Trophy winner, Stanley Cup winner. I mean, the kid is maybe the best player in the world right now. He, he's absolutely unbelievable to watch um, what he does. There's no one else truly like him in the NHL. Uh, Got to give a shout out to Eric Johnson as well, someone who's been with the Avalanche for quite a while now after being the first overall selection uh, in the 2006 NHL draft. Thanks again, St. Louis, for not taking Jonathan Taves. Us Blackhawks fans greatly appreciate it. Uh, but up and down that roster, Nazem Kadri, I mean, I could go on and on about all the guys. Bowen Byram looked like a real stud out there, uh, which I'm very happy for him um, after all the concussion problems that he's dealt with. Sure looks like the Blackhawks should have picked him with the third overall selection. That's the only real argument you can make out there. Don't hit me with the Trevor Zegers stuff. Plenty of other teams passed on him. I get seeing Trevor Zegers go and light it up and change the, the game per se uh, for Anaheim kind of hurts when Kirby's struggling, but um, he wasn't really even in consideration for the Blackhawks. The one you should be a little upset about is Bowen Byron because he just killed it on the back end for the Avs uh, throughout their postseason run. Devon Taves, the list goes on and on and on. This team was absolutely stacked from top to bottom. Everyone seems to have incredible speed and pace to the game. Um, they were a team that was destined to win the Stanley Cup. I mean, a dominant regular season, just a couple points away uh, from winning the President's Trophy, even though they dealt with numerous injuries along the way. As I mentioned already, they dominated the Western Conference on the way to the final, and they take down the Kings, the two-time defending Stanley Cup champion, Tampa Bay Lightning, they take them down in six games, a real impressive showing. And all in all, this was a phenomenal Stanley Cup playoff, I thought. I mean, each and every series was electric for the most part. Uh, I was tuned in from start to finish. Uh, and really uh, another phenomenal postseason. And even though, you know, a lot of people thought that the Lightning or the Avs were the were going to be the teams that were going to get the job done. I also had the Lightning winning the Stanley Cup for the third time in a row in my bracket challenge to open up these playoffs. So I, I came a little bit short, um, but really it was anyone's game. I mean, I did feel that way going into the playoffs back in early May, whenever it was. Uh, I know it came down to the Avs and the Bolts, but it really felt like it was anyone's game this year. There were a lot of teams that were right there on the cusp. It was a phenomenal regular season. Uh, so all in all, phenomenal year of hockey. I wish the Blackhawks could have had a bigger part of it, but it, it was a fun year, fun postseason, and congratulations to the Colorado Avalanche. Well-deserved. They were the best team in the NHL this season, so well-deserving of taking home the Stanley Cup, and I know Nathan McKinnon and the boys are going to have a, a lot of partying going on in the next couple of weeks. But one other quick thing I wanted to do with the Stanley Cup playoffs now wrapping up was take a look back at the Brandon Hagel trade, knowing what we do now after he just finished up his first postseason run as a member of the Tampa Bay Lightning and of course that deal for the Blackhawks was sending Brandon Hagel along with uh, I think it was a fourth round pick I somehow don't have my phone on me I don't know where I put it that's unfortunate um, but it, it was Brandon Hagel uh, for obviously two first round picks one in 2023 one in 2024 along with Taylor Radish and Boris Kachuk and Hagel, I thought, had a, a solid postseason, especially for someone that was playing through injury. There was a while there where he wasn't even taking part in the morning skates because they wanted to let him recover. Um, obviously, with it being the playoffs, we don't know exactly what it was. It was never disclosed or anything. 
Um, so that probably hindered his offensive performance a little bit. I'll get into those numbers in just a second, but defensively, uh, John Cooper relied on Hagel a bunch along with Anthony Sorelli and Alex Kalorn to be kind of that shutdown defensive line. And that's, you know, while Hagel has shown some offensive promise, especially this season when he was with the Blackhawks and had that breakout first half, which led to this pretty hefty return. Um, the defensive side of his game, it was always never in question. I mean, he plays a 200 foot game. He has the heart and intensity he plays a grinded out style. Um, he's great on the back check, very responsible. So all those things translated really well for Tampa Bay throughout the Stanley cup playoff run. He was playing a, a really big defensive role for them. Offensively. It, it was kind of, um, uh, kind of disappointing I would say if I was a lightning fan but again I'm sure dealing with an injury probably didn't help in this situation but in 23 games Hagel finished with just six points two goals and four assists and I believe uh the second one of those goals was an empty netter uh so not a whole lot of offensive production out of Brandon Hagel in this postseason run the injury like I said might have had something to do with that. He is still 23 years old, and this was his first Stanley Cup playoff experience. So that goes into it as well. But uh, six points for Hagel, more of a defensive role for the Bolts throughout the way. And I, I'm i not saying that Hagel doesn't – his offensive progression is tampered or anything, and the ceiling is now lower because of what he did in the postseason. No. Um, but I do think he is a middle six and maybe on a good team like Tampa Bay, a bottom six type of player. And for the Blackhawks to get two first round picks, even if they are going to be somewhere in the 20s, uh, along with Taylor Radish, who looks like he can be kind of, I don't want to say a similar player to Hagel, but can play kind of a similar middle to bottom six type of role. And he showed a lot of promise in his first 21 games with the Blackhawks this season, especially in the goal scoring department, along with Boris Kachuk, who they've signed on to be a fourth liner for the next couple of years and is going to get an opportunity to prove that he's a consistent NHLer. It just looks like a really good deal for the Blackhawks. And it could be a good deal for both teams as well. You know, if Hagel fulfills a role that the Lightning need, I mean, they don't really need more superstars. They just need those to get healthy. Braden Point obviously was out for a lot of the Stanley Cup final and the playoffs. Um, but they got Stamkos. They have Point. They have Kucherov. They have Palat. Um, they have someone like Sorelli who's kind of stepping up. He's more defensive-minded too, but has that offensive skill set. Kalorn, he was quiet in the playoffs, no goals for killer, which really affected Tampa Bay's offense a little bit. Um, he's a more offensive guy. They don't really need Brandon Hagel to be a, a 20 or 30 goal scorer year in and year out. Would it be great? Yeah, but he's probably more of a third, fourth liner for them, considering the position that they find themselves in with that competitive window being still very open despite uh, coming short of the three-peat. And for the Blackhawks to get two first round picks. Listen, I get there late, but there's still two first round picks that gives them at least two in each of the next two years. Plus Taylor Radish, who's shown a little bit of promise and Boris Kachuk, who can be a fourth liner potentially uh, one day down the road. Um, I think it's a really good deal for the Blackhawks. And again, something that Kyle Davidson said just simply couldn't say no to. So um, um, I feel bad for Hagel that he comes up a little bit short of winning the Stanley cup, but I'm sure, uh, the lightning are going to be back. They have a lot of that core locked up. Uh, I don't think they're going to be going anywhere. So I'm sure Brandon Hagel is going to have plenty more coming in the future years. Uh, but one last time, congratulations to the Colorado avalanche for taking home the Stanley cup this year. And finally getting over that hump, which I know has to feel amazing for Nathan McKinnon and a lot of the core pieces alongside him. All right, that takes care of uh, an updated reflection on the Brandon Hagel deal from back at the trade deadline. Coming up in just a minute, I am going to get into 2022 NHL draft prospect Sam Rinzel's profile. But first, I need to talk to you all about Bet Online. It's that time of the year again, folks, as baseball season is finally upon us, and Bet Online has way more odds and info from game scores, totals, player performance props. To who the next fired manager is going to be, Bet Online remains the number one spot for all sports betting here in 2022. And it's not just baseball, from esports, golf, boxing, and UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Do not wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2022 season. Bet Online is both the fastest and the easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports and Vegas casino games. Bet Online 
where the game begins. All right, we're back here on the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast. Moving on into segment two here this morning. I wanted to be sure to get into 2022 NHL draft prospect Sam Rinzel's draft profile because Corey Pronman, who's a draft analyst and does a bunch of mock drafts this time of the year, uh, he came out with his latest mock draft, which went through the first two rounds. Uh, And by the way, folks, we're a little over a week away from the NHL draft. At the moment, the Blackhawks don't have a first round pick, but if they're going to be trading Alex Dabrinka, that's, you know, probably their way back in. Uh, If it were to happen, probably going to go down sometime within the next week. So make sure to stay tuned on that front. Uh, But a little over a week away from the NHL draft, the Blackhawks have two picks in the second round. Uh, The first is going to be at number 38 and one player um, that's kind of rumored to go in that area. uh, And Pronman actually had the Blackhawks taking this player with the 38th overall selection was defenseman Sam Renzel. Uh, who just finished up his junior year of high school with Chaska High School in Minnesota. Uh, He absolutely dominated up there in his junior campaign as a defenseman. He had 38 points, 9 goals, and 28 assists in 28 games there. Uh, Was a dominant high school player, and it was just about time for him to leave that level. So at the end of the season, once his high school year finished up, um, Rinzel actually went and played with the Waterloo Blackhawks in the USHL and finished with 10 points, two goals, and eight assists in 21 games there. Uh, but a breakdown of Rinzel, as I already mentioned, he's a def- defenseman, six foot four, 181 pound right handed defenseman. He just turned 18 a couple of days ago, so happy belated birthday to defenseman Sam Rinzel. Uh, but interesting to see that the Blackhawks or, or Pronman uh, had the Blackhawks taking Renzel with the 38th overall pick. And actually, again, I don't have my phone. I I don't know where I put it. I'm really dropping the ball on that front, and I apologize. Uh, But it wasn't actually Pronman who had the Blackhawks taking Renzel at 38. It was from an unnamed NHL source. So I do wonder if there's some rumors lingering about that the Blackhawks have their eye on Renzel. Uh, But it's certainly a little bit interesting to think that Um, If this is going to be their first pick in the 2022 NHL draft, they're going to go the defenseman route because two things, the defenseman prospect pool is obviously way more loaded than the forward prospect pool is. Uh, And there's plenty of guys that are looking to step on the scene in the next two, three, four years. I don't even have to mention all the names. If you're a Blackhawks fan, you're aware of this situation. Uh, And then, like I said, the forward prospect pool is so thin. And aside from Lucas Reichel, you know, it, it, it might be Colton Doc, who's the next top forward prospect in the organization. So the Blackhawks certainly could use to, uh, could, could add a little bit more depth in that area. And the 39th overall pick or 38th, I should say, excuse me, not too far away from being a first rounder. So you could still get some pretty decent value that early in the second round. So a little curious to see that uh, this NHL source had the Blackhawks going with Renzel. Um, but one thing I will say about it is, He's one of the younger players in this year's draft. He just turned 18 a few days back, Uh, just finished up his junior year of high school. Um, He has a lot of promise and has shown a lot of uh, that, that the ceiling could be very high one day down the road. Um, He's uh, on top of his size being six foot four. He's a very good skater. Uh, He has a good stride and is known for jumping up in transition and helping out offensively. He's got good offensive potential and creativity from the back end. Uh, And according to a couple of uh, scouts that I've read up uh, articles on, on Renzel, um, probably a little bit more offensive potential than defensively. He's got some good creativity, a good playmaker, Uh, A decent shot, probably more of a pass first defenseman, but does have that creativity to run a power play. Um, A a good skater, as I mentioned. Um, So that that side is really impressive. And there's belief that he has plenty of room to grow in those areas, too. Um, The the thing about Renzel, he he does have the ability to be a 200 foot defenseman one day down the road. He's just got to work at that a little bit more and continue to develop that side of his game and, and The biggest thing, too, is that he needs to take on better competition. Only 21 games of USHL talent so far in his career. Uh, He is a University of Minnesota Golden Gopher recruit, but he's not going to be joining them until the 2023-2024 season. So probably one more year down in Waterloo, which is 
going to help his development. I'm sure he, he needs to play against some older players and some better competition. Uh, and that will, you know, hopefully help uh, hone and further develop his, his skills a little bit more. Um, but also defensively, he's already shown some signs of knowing how to use his size to his advantage. He can stand players up in the neutral zone. He takes advantage of his long reach and can break up plays in transition. Uh, a good stride. He just needs to work on rounding out his game a little bit more in that area. And again, playing a heavier game, getting stronger, still only 180 pounds, needs to add a little bit of meat to the bones um, and, and just get a little bit more competition regularly against top players. I think that's the biggest thing for Renzel. He has this two-way potential. He's got great size. He's a good skater, good transition game, good first pass, good playmaker. We just need to see it against better quality of competition, right? And that's the that's the difficulty with projecting these high schoolers or these 17-year-olds who are so young. You don't really know how they're going to fare against you know, the bigger kids or kids who are a little bit older than them and have the same skill set. It's all a little bit of a guessing game, but considering the the skill set that uh, Renzel has already displayed and everything that he's shown, um, there is a lot of buzz about, you know, if he does continue to develop well and does handle the next levels, uh, d- does take them does take them in stride, then, you know, he does have the ability to be a top four defenseman one day down the road because uh, the things he does well, he's already doing incredibly uh, at an incredibly high level for being just 17 and, and now just 18 as of a couple of days ago. So it feels like there's a, a high risk, high reward potential here with taking Sam Renzel uh, with a 38th overall selection. The one thing I will say for the Blackhawks is they can afford to be a little patient and maybe that aids in the decision of going with the defenseman here with their first pick in the second round is that, Hey, we know we have a lot of defensemen that are trying to step on the scene in the next two, three, four years, but Renzel next year, he's going to be playing still in the USHL probably. Then he's going to go and play college hockey with the golden Gophers. He could play two, three or hell, even four seasons there. So he could be six or seven years away. Um, so that's kind of um, the mindset that could aid in the Blackhawks taking a defenseman here. I still personally would rather them go with a forward, uh, especially because Renzel is this kind of risky type player. Um, maybe they want to go ballsy. Maybe Kyle Davidson feels like the risk is worth the reward in this spot. Um, maybe that's the way they want to go with it. I don't know. I just personally think we really need to be focusing on the forward group at this point. Uh, but Sam Renzel def- definitely has an interesting makeup and an interesting set of skills uh, that could translate well to the NHL level if things continue to progress uh, in the next couple of years. But I just definitely wanted to be sure to break down Renzel and go over his draft profile a little bit uh, because uh, in Corey Pronman's latest mock draft, that's who he or an NHL source, I guess, uh, had the Blackhawks taking with the 38th overall pick, their first selection in the second round. All right, there is a quick chat on Blackhawks potentially looking at taking defenseman prospect Sam Renzel with the 38th overall selection in the upcoming 2022 NHL draft. Coming up in just a moment, I still got to get into defenseman Riley Stillman's 2021-2022 season recap. Welcome back to the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast. I'm your host, Jack Bushman. Moving on into segment three now today, it's time to get into defenseman Riley Stillman's 2021-2022 season recap segment. So for Stillman, uh, obviously he got a little bit of action with the Blackhawks towards the end of last season. Once the Blackhawks made that trade at the deadline with the Florida Panthers, which saw Henrik Borgstrom, uh, Brett Connolly and Riley Stillman come to Chicago in exchange for Lucas Walmark and Lucas Carlson, which has turned into quite a, a very odd deal considering Borgstrom hasn't done a whole lot. Brett Connolly has basically been buried down in Rockford. And then Riley Stillman's actually turned into the one piece who looks like he could be a future player of the Blackhawks uh, throughout this rebuild potentially. I still think it's a little bit interesting to hear that Caleb Jones is expected to be re-signed as an RFA this summer. Uh, If that is the case, then I think Stillman might 
end up being the odd man out. Uh, but we're going to have to wait and see what all happens there. I'm sure um, it's going to be, even for a Blackhawks team, that's not going to be making a whole lot of moves. It's still going to be a pretty chaotic offseason. Uh, but for Stillman, he got a little bit of action with the Blackhawks last season and actually kind of showed some promise. He scored his first NHL goal, actually. Uh, he was very physical, rugged in the defensive zone. And that really led into uh, training camp and the preseason this year where Stillman immediately was – uh, considered to be one of the NHL guys. Like there wasn't even really much consideration that he was going to start the year down in Rockford. Um, but it, it didn't go the way that I think a lot of the Blackhawks organization, also Stillman himself probably had hoped uh, a little bit of a lesser role this year because of the struggles. He did only play 13 games last season, but uh, had a little bit larger of a role at the end of the year than he did for the most part of this season. Uh, and just never really found consistency all that much I thought he struggled in the defensive zone he did a good job of being physical but there were a lot of breakdowns and in transition in coverage he would get out of place uh he, he's still relatively young um so maybe it was just a little bit of growing pains with this being his first time <clears throat> truly as a full NHL or full-time NHL or um, maybe that was something that played into it a little bit but nonetheless Riley Stillman I thought did not have a uh, the kind of progressional season that I was hoping to see out of him all in all, he played in 52 games this year, uh, two goals in 10 assists for 12 points, a little bit of help from the back end, but honestly not very much. Um, that's not going to be the type of game that he plays uh, And the Blackhawks do need some ruggedness on the back end, but if he's not going to be providing offense, he definitely needs to hold his own a little bit better on, on defense as he starts to get a little bit older or else he's probably going to be a fringe guy. I feel like throughout the rest of the rest of his career, unless he can take that next step. Um, 36 penalty minutes for Stillman. I, I will say I liked how he was willing to step up for the boys and he was always willing to scrap. He threw some big hits throughout the course of the way, which I always love to see the Blackhawks need more of that up and down the lineup. So that was probably uh, the highlight of Riley Stillman's season. But honestly, that there, there's not too much to talk about here. Um, not all that noticeable, which sometimes can be good for a defensive defenseman, but there were way, way too many times where I felt like he was a liability in his own zone. He'd have a couple good nights and then he'd really struggle. There was just no consistency out of him in the back end. Uh, in terms of shooting percentage, 4.1% for Stillman. I actually was kind of surprised to see that he had 49 shots on goal in 52 games this year. Did not think that he was going to be a shot on goal per game guy uh, for a second or third pairing defensive minded defenseman. Honestly, that's something I'll take. Uh, in terms of time on ice, I already mentioned a little bit. Stillman averaged just barely over 15 minutes this season, whereas in his first 13 games as a Blackhawk at the end of the COVID-shortened 2021 season, he was at 18-13. So I think there was probably hope that he'd be able to be right there again as a second or, or third line guy, maybe a number four or number five for the Blackhawks. Uh, but due to his struggles, I think they really had to kind of stick to him as a third pairing guy where he'd be playing with, you know, Eric Gustafson or Caleb Jones down there and wouldn't just be getting the same opportunities, especially with Seth Jones leading the NHL in average time on ice this season. Uh, as I mentioned too, the hits and the block shots, those were probably the areas where Stillman left me the most impressed. 122 hits in 52 games this season, night in and night out. He was willing to throw the weight around, understanding his role that he needs to be physical. So I will give him a tip of the cap for that. Uh, he also blocked 67 shots in 52 games. Most of the Blackhawks defensemen weren't given much of a choice but to block shots this year. That's why so many of them wound up near the top of the NHL league leaders. Uh, but Stillman was in that mix, too. He was blocking shots when he was healthy and when he was a part of the lineup. Uh, but this was kind of uh, eye-opening a little bit to me. Um, Stillman was, aside from... Um, Connor Murphy and Jake McCabe, no other Blackhawk finished with a Corsi percentage in the 30s, except for Riley Stillman. He finished at 39.2% this year. And when you go and look at the, the defensive pairings, this is something I always recommend that listeners do. Go to um, Natural Stat Trick and go and look at the defensive pairings and look at how certain pairings for the Blackhawks uh, fared throughout the course of the season. Riley Stillman was one of those guys who kind of like Jake McCabe, everyone he played with, things just didn't really go all that well. So uh, there's still certainly another level for him to go to. Uh, I, I think that 
he's he has the capability to be a physical shutdown second pairing defenseman maybe one day down the road, but he's just got to be able to do it more consistently and do it night in and night out. I'll give him a little benefit of the doubt because he is still pretty young and this was his first legitimate full NHL season and the Blackhawks as a whole were really bad, so that didn't help Stillman's cause either. Um, But I think we all know that there is uh, another step for him to take in order to kind of not only – cement himself as uh, a future piece of the rebuild here in Chicago, but also as uh, just a legitimate NHL defenseman. Like he's kind of been this fringe guy throughout his career so far. He's had a lot of promise, had promise from the start when he was with Florida. Uh, He's given a legitimate chance to prove that he is a full-time NHLer here with the Blackhawks. And in his first season, I would, I just thought it was kind of meh by Stillman. So all in all, taking everything into consideration, uh, I am going to give Blackhawks defenseman Riley Stillman uh, a flat C for his performance this year. I think I probably he was probably deserving of a C minus, honestly. But I said I was going to be a little lenient with him because of his age. Um, but that's you know that's what most of the listeners voted upon. They thought he he was uh, I think it was like sixty five percent or something. Again, I don't have my phone on me, so I'm just playing a guessing game here. Um, but 65% or something like that came in with the C. So I, I feel like we are all right on point for the most part uh, as to how Riley Stillman fared this year and what grade he was deserving. But if you feel differently, be sure to go and let me know down in the comment section of the grade you thought Stillman deserved and let me know why. I always want to know if I'm on the same page or if we all feel differently about something. It makes for a good conversation. So if you feel differently about Riley Stillman's season than I do, make sure to go and let me know down below in the comment section and go and smash the like button while you're down there as well. Uh, But one more time, taking everything into consideration, I'm going to give Blackhawks defenseman Riley Stillman a flat C for his performance this past season. All right, folks, I think that is going to take care of Tuesday, June 28th episode of Locked On Blackhawks. Thank you again for tuning into the show and be sure to go and follow Locked On Blackhawks right now, wherever you get your podcasts and go and subscribe to Locked On Blackhawks on YouTube and you'll be able to get the video version of each episode as soon as it comes out each day. And after the show, be sure to go and check out the Locked On NHL podcast for a full recap of the Stanley Cup final with the Colorado Avalanche taking home the Stanley Cup. It's free and available on all platforms, so be sure to go and check out Locked On NHL right now, wherever you get your podcasts. <clears throat> Excuse me. Once again, thank you for tuning into today's episode. I'm your host, Jack Bushman. You can find me out on Twitter at Jack Bushman2, or you can also go and check out my Strictly Blackhawks account at Talk and Hockey for all the latest Blackhawks news and updates. And for any questions at all regarding anything related to the show, feel free to email LockdownBlackhawks at gmail.com. You could also hit me up on any one of my Twitter accounts, or you could call 708 653 0572 to leave a voicemail. So until tomorrow's episode, thanks again for tuning into the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day.